Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris, and this is going to be uh, a review of the homework. This will be for respiratory physics, uh, airway uh, resistance, and static and dynamic compliance calculations. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So first of all, what we need to know to do this is we need the, to know the three fundamental formulas. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, compliance real quick. And uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, go okay so let's go ahead and talk about the fundamental uh, formula for compliance compliance is uh, delta V change in volume divided by change in pressure delta P and there are actually two types of compliance there is the static compliance uh, C static or I'll just go CS for um, compliance static and static compliance is simply basically just when I hold my breath you take a breath you hold it so you administer tidal volume hold your breath you check that pressure and that pressure is known as, as a plateau pressure so the C static the change in volume is going to be the tidal volume right? just a normal tidal volume and then the pressure required to generate that that tidal volume and with static compliance we actually will assess the plateau pressure the P plat Okay, the plateau pressure, the P plat, and then we need to subtract PEEP from that P plat if we have it. Okay, we need to subtract the PEEP because the PEEP is where I'm going to start at, right? PEEP is all pressure that's always there. Um, so that is my delta. Whatever the difference between these two is my, my delta P. Now, if we're talking about um, compliance dynamic, that is uh, compliance when I actually have air moving. Um, we're not going to look at the plateau pressure so much. Uh, we're still going to look at the tidal volume, but instead of the plateau pressure, we'll be looking at the peak inspiratory pressure, the PIP. So we just replace the P plat with the PIP, and we still subtract the PIP from the PIP if we have it there. Okay. So that those are our uh, formulas for compliance, and then airway resistance, RA, um, R A W. Um, airway resistance is uh, simply a change in pressure, delta P, um, divided by the flow, V dot, and that flow needs to be in liters per second. Pressure centimeters of water volume can either be in liters or milliliters. I just keep the units the same. Okay, so now that we have our fundamental formulas, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, question number one. And question number one says, I have a patient on a ventilator. The follow, following uh, findings when I do the ventilator check, the PIP is uh, 30 centimeters of water. The plateau pressure, the P plat, is 20 centimeters of water. Um, the flow um, is, let's see here, 60. Um, liters per minute. Okay, that's my flow. Uh, my tidal volume is 600 milliliters. 600 milliliters or 0 0.6 liters. And then my PEEP is uh, plus 5 centimeters of water. And it says what is a static compliance, what is a dynamic, and what is airway resistance. Okay, so uh, all I have to do now is just do a little bit of a plug and chug here. So let's go ahead and do the static compliance first, CS. And that's going to be the tidal volume, or 600 milliliters, divided by the P plat, which is 20, uh, 20 here. Subtract the PEEP, which is 5. So that's uh, C, 20 subtract 5 is just 15. So it's 600 divided by 15 or it's simply 40 milliliters per centimeter of H2O water pressure, okay? So that's the static compliance, and let's do the dynamic compliance. So 600 is my delta V, my change in uh, volume. Um, and instead of P plat, I will now put the PIP. Um, the PIP in this case is 30 and I will subtract from 30 PEEP to get my delta P, my change in pressure. <clears throat> so it's simply 600 divided by 25, and that gives me 24 milliliters 
per centimeter of water pressure, H2O. And then the next is what is a patient's airway resistance, the RAW, R-A-W. Okay, airway resistance, delta P, uh, change in pressure over flow. Um, change in pressure in this case is going to be the PIP minus the P-plat. Um, that's my delta P when it comes to airway resistance is PIP, uh, PIP minus P plat. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the PIP is uh, 30. Um, the P plat is 20 minus 20 divided by flow in liters per second. So we need to convert um, typically the flow on a ventilator being liters per minute. We will need to convert that to liters per second by dividing whatever liters per minute our flow happens to be by 60. So 60 divided by 60 in this case is 1. So that makes our math pretty simple. So uh, let's see, 30 subtract 20 is just 10. 10 divided by 1 is 10. So that's 10 centimeters of H2O per liter per second. Okay, so I have calculated all of these, my static, my dynamic compliance, and my airway resistance. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and erase all this stuff here. Um, and we have got another problem. All right. And I'll go through these hopefully a little faster now that I've taken you through one. Okay, so we'll do this in blue. Um, so let's see, instead of 30, I'm just going to put an X through all of these. And okay, so the PIP, um, problem number two, my peak inspiratory pressure is 40. My P plat is uh, 38. Uh, flow is 30 liters per minute. Uh, tidal volume is 500 milliliters. And my PEEP is now 10. Okay, same thing. Uh, it asks for what is the static compliance and what is airway resistance. So static compliance is tidal volume 500. So CS equals 500 divided by the P plat, um, which is 38 minus the PEEP, which is 10. So that's 500 divided by uh, 28, and that gives me about 18. Ooh, there we go, 18. Uh, milliliters per centimeter of water pressure, H2O. And then it wants to calculate the airway resistance, the raw. So the PIP is, let's see, 40. Subtract the P plat, 38, divided by the flow in liters per second. So 30 divided by 60 is 0 0.5 liters per second. And that is going to be, uh, let's see here, 2 divided by 0 0.5, which is going to give me a value of 4 centimeters of water per liter per second. Okay, so now the question asks, um, is a patient's problem more of a lung low lung compliance or high airway resistance? So you remember, normal compliance is about 50 to 100 uh, milliliters per centimeter of water and normal airway resistance is about 1 to 2 but it can go all the way up to 10 if I have somebody who's intubated and on a ventilator. Um, so clearly airway resistance is actually normal so that's not really our problem but if you look at the compliance 18 is significantly lower than 50 so I have a patient with very non-compliant lungs and what are some things that we want to look at? Well, we want to look at things like ARDS, circumferential chest wall burns, pneumonia, massive atelectasis, pulmonary edema, and abdominal compartment syndrome. Okay, so that is the second problem. Uh, whoops. Let's go ahead and uh, do the last problem, uh, which is very similar to the second part. And hopefully you guys have gotten a good feel for this now going through this. And uh, hopefully you find this uh, video pretty helpful. It's really pretty simple to calculate these. It's just remembering the formulas and being able to do good um, plug and chug. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and change these values now. So question number three has a PIP of, uh, let's see here, 40 uh, P plat of 20, a flow of 60, 
a tidal volume of 600 and a peep of plus 5. Okay, so same thing. It wants us to calculate static compliance and airway resistance. All right, so static compliance is tidal volume 600 uh, divided by P plat, uh, subtract P, so that's 20, subtract 5, so it's 600 divided by um, 15, which gives me 40 milliliters per centimeter of H2O. All right, for my static compliance, airway resistance, raw. Uh, so raw is PIP minus P plat, so that's 40 minus 20 um, divided by a flow. Let's see our flow. 60 divided by 60 is 1, so that's divided by 1. That's 20 divided by 1, or 20 um, centimeters of H2O per liter per second. And now it asks the same question. Uh, is this an airway resistance or a compliance problem? Um, compliance, if you remember, is 50 to 100. Uh, milliliters per centimeter of water pressure um, and um, airway resistance can go all the way up to 10 if you have somebody who's intubated. Um, so clearly this is twice as high as it should be. Uh, compliance is a little low, it's a little less than 50, but what's the major problem going on? And clearly the major problem in this case is a um, airway resistance. And a quick down and dirty way of finding out if you have an airway resistance um, issue is just simply taking the difference between the PIP and the P plat. And whatever that difference is, the greater the difference, the greater um, airway resistance you have. Um, so 40 subtract 30 is going to indicate less airway resistance than 40 subtract 20. Um, so clearly this is an increased airway resistance and what a problem, what kind of things do we want to look at there? Anything that increases airway resistance, mucus plugs, a small endotracheal tube, a kinky endotracheal tube, bronchospasm, some sort of upper airway edema or obstruction. Okay, guys, that is it. I hope you um, enjoyed this video. Hopefully that helped you out. And uh, we'll see you for midterm tomorrow. As always, thanks for hanging in there.